So what I did, I have, a, I had, have two extra blow-off valves, but what I did is I, this right-hand one was sticking, so I, I replaced it with a different one. Although it seems to be okay, but for whatever reason, um, it wasn't opening as much. So what I did is I took off these springs, which are the little ones, and replaced with this spring, which is the bigger one, on both of these blow-off valves. Then I reconnected the um, I reconnected the vacuum lines, and I made this approximately one centimeter sticking out. This side here is a little more. Actually, probably what I should do is make sure that these are exactly the same. So I'm gonna. Okay, let's look. So that's how much thread I have on the uh, pre-tension spring. You know, it's like almost a centimeter, but not quite. Here, it's looking about the same. Okay, so let's start this thing up. See how it runs now in terms of boost levels with the bigger spring. Okay, did another adjustment. So big springs and blow off valve adjustment like this. And uh, it wasn't letting off uh, quite enough. So now we're gonna try it again.
pounds of boost at idle. Goes up to about eight. So I'm gonna make it just a little tighter. I think I've got this now. So it fluctuates between about 4.8 pounds of boost up to like 9.8 to 10 pounds of boost and then it lets off. Um, these blow off valves mostly close at idle but there's just a little leakage and it winds up keeping it at about 4.8 pounds. This, you can see <laughs> my exhaust thing is not happy. It seems to be smoking a little bit but um, this now, uh, it seems to be like 12 to 13 at idle, sometimes 14, and then it kind of goes down to 11 something at uh, revving. So I think that it's safe, and I think that it's actually in really great shape now. So we're going to go for a drive. So I just checked the timing one last time because if you go beyond 25 or so uh, degrees of advance, what can happen is you can have knocking that really damages your energy, uh, damages your en engine because um, the compressed air fuel in there has a tendency to ignite sooner and you might ignite it a little earlier and then it's almost like... Um, you ignite it before the rod is over the uh, uh, over the hump in the uh, crankshaft. So what I did is I checked it and revving it up, it doesn't even get past like 20. Uh, it's like 18 or 20 or something like that. So it might even be that I can advance the timing just a tiny bit and it might actually run better. I've been like risk averse. So in other words, I'm trying to, you know, this could probably be at 12.7 air fuel, but it's at like, it gets into the mid 11s and that's just being safe. The timing could go to 24, but it's now at 18, 19, 20 um, when I'm revving it. So I think I'm just doing it safely and uh, I think should it should be good at this point. Quick thing to point out, the tape that I thought was the same as this stuff melted and that's why I have this mess now. So this tape here, which is cold weather 3M foil tape is really good in the heat. And this time alone, I tried to use sure tape DC 181. It just melted. And so that was uh, a terrible idea. And uh, I'm gonna have to clean this off a little bit now. Let me get a little wire brush and spray on some kind of uh, uh, solvent or something like that. But anyway, just wanted to let everybody know to use real foil tape if you're trying to do anything with exhaust because, you know, that probably got up to 400, 400 degrees, 300, 400 degrees and at least and just melted the shit out of it. So, all right. Okay, here we go. We're going to try this out now that I have the, uh, now that I have the uh, blow off valves and everything taken. Mm. See if this thing works.
Okay, motor stumbling. I changed the timing. So now it's a little bit more just like normal timing. Seven and a half or seven-ish degrees.
gotta see if I can figure out why it stumbles a little bit. What is going on? I don't know.